In one of the show's more surreal episodes, they tackle virtual reality. Good god. Of course, it's a vampire game, and Nick must enter a camera filter world wearing a bright pink shirt. Like all vampires do. This is absolutely the most ludicrous thing the show presents, but also hilariously wrong about technology, gaming, and how people in general act. Add to that a killer using the game to lead Nick to clues out in the open in real life, and it all spells horrible 90s TV fad. Nick must feed in the game in order to move forward and try and solve this week's current case, which means slipping in the vampire department, because of course wearing a pair of sunglasses would allow you to experience what it's like to drain someone of their blood. In another episode, we learn that vampires can access people's memories and feelings through their blood, apparently reincarnation is real, and Nick has to face a woman he killed again, so that means vampires will continuously live on as someone else? What about the light and all that stuff from before? And Tracy is a reincarnation of one of the people this woman killed? Um, what? Natalie tells Nick she doesn't believe evil can die, just be controlled, so... Nick's gonna be evil forever, basically? Or how about this one? There's a vampire who's only a vampire when she's her split personality, but can walk in the day when she's the other personality? Because she believes that she's not a vampire, so therefore she isn't. What the hell does any of that mean? This is simultaneously an important plot element and contradicted entirely in another episode called Night in Question. Nick is shot in the head and now he has amnesia, trying to work through who he is and what happened the night he was shot. The Night in Question? <laughs> Because Nick doesn't remember he's a vampire, he can eat like a normal person. So his physical repulsion before was just in his head? But wait, if that schizo -ep is to be believed, if Nick doesn't think he's a vampire, then he isn't, right? Isn't that the cure? Natalie doesn't want to tell Nick about his vampirism to try and save him, but he soon has dreams of his true nature and finds himself slipping back, so... I guess he didn't believe he wasn't a vampire hard enough? Natalie finally has to tell him the truth, that he's a vampire and him being a vampire is what's kept them apart. So I guess they've settled on them not being together? By the end, Nick doesn't have all of his memories back and goes to LaCroix to fill in the blanks. Presumably by the next episode all of his memories have been jolted, but it's a very strange way to end it. I don't know if they thought bonking him on the head and he instantly remembers would be too unrealistic, but you're kinda past that point, guys. Our intrepid heroes come across an incurable disease that only affects vampires and is spread through blood. This is, of course, an allegory for AIDS. Vishan and his stupid cockney friend are infected, and while I didn't care about that character, they did do a good job at handling Vishan's reaction. This is someone he's known for centuries, so it was quite sad to see Vishan cradle his dying friend. It was a rare, very sincere moment with him. In 500 years, I've buried a lot of mortal friends. So when does it get easier? I'll let you know. LaCroix unintentionally finds the cure by, shock of all shocks, killing one of Natalie's old friends. Although they pulled the kill another one of Natalie's loved ones card, Natalie saves the vampires anyway. You know, there are still some people who think that AIDS isn't worth curing. That men like Calvin Tucker aren't worth saving. Who are they to decide that? Who am I? This is such a great moment for Natalie. Everyone is worth saving to her. Everyone has a chance. The best Tracy episode, I think, was Jane Doe. I thought the whole thing was really disturbing. A woman is found tied to a tree and shot in the head, so heavily decomposed that no one can identify the body. We find out Tracy gets nauseous around corpses, which is weird since we previously saw her looking at a dead body with a slit throat and she was just fine, but I digress. In order to get over this, she's going to help Natalie perform the autopsy. I'm not sure why, maybe it's the heavy focus on the body this episode, but it seems the closest to an actual case on the show. It echoes so many unsolved murders, you really believe something hateful and tragic happened to this woman. It's also an interesting study of what goes into an autopsy and the importance of Natalie's job. Oh, but this episode is also where they reveal Nick and LaCroix met Hitler. Because, you know, of course they met Hitler. And he was too evil even for LaCroix. We should probably discuss Jeanette's departure. The actress left because she wanted to pursue other things, but she did return one more time to give us a conclusion. That would be the human factor, one of the more controversial episodes in the fandom. Jeanette comes back and it turns out she's mortal. 
When she left, she fell in love with a human. They made love and she started to feed on him, but she stopped herself and his blood warmed her heart. I guess? It grew three sizes that day, like a sexy Grinch. And over several sex sessions where she got to feed on him, she slowly became human again. This doesn't even begin to remotely make sense. Because the man risked his only life to help others, she realized how much she loved humanity and Nick's quest was right. It goes deeper into why she left in the first place. Doubts about herself, what she is, crept into her mind and she feared she'll become like Nick, so she left. Her fear was she was becoming too human, but leaving is what gave her the exact thing she was trying to escape. It was nice to have somewhat of a conclusion for her story. On the one hand, the way she became human makes no sense, but on the other, having no explanation makes it that much harder for Nick, who still can't achieve the one thing he's been searching for for centuries. And he doesn't want to try it with Natalie and risk her life. But Jeanette's sudden mortalness isn't the controversy of the episode so much as the ending. Jeanette is fatally wounded during the climax, but we don't see whether Nick turned her or she passed away. According to the creative team, yes, she was turned, and the marks on the bodies at the end are implied to be caused by Jeanette. But you could also interpret that as Nick getting revenge for Jeanette's death, or Lacroix could have done it. But these last lines are pretty obviously saying she made it. Through hellish circumstance, she obtains what has proven so elusive to you. Only to have that one in a billion happenstance taken from her by you. I don't know whether to laugh or to cry for you, Nicholas. She must have left it here today. But if Nick did turn her, even while she was begging him not to, he would be going against the ideals he's fought for, to live, to die, as a mortal. With all of that out of the way, we can begin winding down to the end. All right, one episode before the finale, we discover Divya was trapped in a tomb by Lacroix 20 years after she turned him, and now she's escaped to exact revenge. How did she survive all this time? Who knows? You can't pull the too old card on this one, unless 20 counts. How did she regenerate? Let alone survive all those years. Perhaps the evil that permeated the tomb sustained her, I don't know, does it really matter? And explained. Even to other vampires, Divya is evil. Like, whoa. Lacroix is messing his pants over this one. They have such a fantastic actress portraying her. She has a commanding presence that makes you believe she's ancient and powerful. Lucius hurt me. My father. My son. He betrayed me. Even after I raised him from the ashes of Pompeii. He will pay for his sin. You might also recognize her from Goosebumps. She frames Lacroix for a murder just to dick with him, which is rude considering all of the real murders he's committed. Divya was created by one of the first of their kind. She killed him and entombed him for trying to control her. Lacroix saw an evil in her that frightened even him, so he decapitated and entombed her. It's supremely creepy when she starts hitting on her dad. I guess incest was the final straw for him. Nick understands his actions more than Lacroix himself does, as Nick had to do the very same thing to Lacroix in the beginning. The series has made such a turnaround with these two characters. It's really touching how much Nick cares about him now. If you need me, call me, no matter where you are, no matter how far. So Divya has decided to kill all of Lacroix's friends. Really? Vachon and his gang count as Lacroix's friends? He hasn't racked up that many over how many thousand years. So here's something that'll make this season worth it. Vachon totally dies. Yeah, dead serious. I'm going to go the optimistic route and assume this was a middle finger to the network. So as he's dying of his wounds from Divya, he asks Tracy to end it. Tracy doesn't want to, but he attacks her to provoke her into it. Tell everyone I was a cool character. Ugh. Who knows, maybe the evil that permeates in his ass will allow him to revive later. Whatever. Divya's attitude is similar to how Lacroix treats Nick, almost patronizing, amused, in control. She proceeds to beat the crap out of Lacroix, just pummels him. I guess staking her counted more than decapitation in thousands of years in a tomb did? Even after all of that, Lacroix still mourns for her, and Nick sympathizes with his loss. It ends with Nick asking Lacroix to make Tracy forget that Vachon died or that she loved him, to have her remember that he was a good friend, a vampire, who decided to move on. What? 
Why? Why erase the love part but let her keep the vampire thing? Wouldn't you want to do the opposite? Or none at all, you jerk ass? Seriously, what a dick move from Nick. Eh, just make her forget about how she loved him. She can keep the vampire memory, but let's erase any meaning from it. Asshole. You'll be surprised to hear that the series finale begins with the death of one of Natalie's loved ones. Oh, real mature guys, you just had to cram one more in there. She left a suicide note addressed to Natalie, saying not to become empty. Natalie is scared because she's beginning to understand that all too well. She tells Nick that he has to love her as much as she loves him. She wants him to bite her, to give them closure. She'll either become a vampire, or like Jeanette's lover, give Nick the gift of mortality. Without him, she feels she would be dead anyway. Speaking of which, you might notice a pattern near the end of the series. Everybody gon' die. Later on in the episode, a suspect escapes from custody and, just as Nick is hypnotizing him to surrender, Tracy steps in and is fatally shot. She sees Nick's vampiric face, and these are her last words. You could have trusted me. Nick really screwed this one up. If she'd known what he was, she might not have stepped in to take the shot. And he knew she was okay with vampires. When Tracy is dying, Captain Reese speaks to Nick about losing his own partner, about how there's life after this. But it's not a reassuring statement, because for a vampire, there's always life after. It's an endless cycle. A vampire's life is one without a resolution. Nick is tired of the guilt, of losing everything that means anything to him. He needs an ending, too. I have faith that there is a future for us. Here as we are, or somewhere else. I believe in you. I trust you. Nick finally gives in, but unfortunately he drinks too much. Lacroix is there to take him away, to move on to yet another lifetime. He says Nick must let her die or bring her across. But Nick tells him he does have faith, and that's why he can't bring her across. He has to have faith that there is something after this for them. And so he asks Lacroix to kill him instead. In your eyes, I'm the devil. No. Not the devil, Lacroix. What then? You are my closest friend. Lacroix is once again his salvation. He loves Lacroix, and that's why he asks him to finish this task for him. And it breaks Lacroix's heart. You'd be right in assuming the ending was kind of polarizing for people. In the original finale, Nick and Natalie were conclusively killed off, but they decided to make it more vague at the last minute. I've even read a theory that the Nick and Natalie scenes were filmed to be dreamlike, as if they weren't actually happening. Certainly, it wouldn't take a lot of stretching to continue for a fourth season or a movie if they'd suddenly been saved again. And once more, the show was working against some pretty cruddy odds to give this thing a great finale. The episode only had two days to film, and unfortunately, it's partially a clip show, I'm guessing due to budget and time. However, it certainly could have turned out much worse. Yes, I get why people didn't like it, but me personally, I'm okay with it. And if you watch the show all the way through again, it makes perfect sense. What did your soothsayer tell you of me? That you will live very long. And in that time, never find happiness. You might also notice that the ending was parallel to the pilot, with Lacroix staking Nick instead of the other way around. Damn you. Damn you, Nicholas. Not the devil, Lacroix. But instead of killing someone in anger, this is done with love. And that's probably why I didn't hate it that much. At first, it doesn't make any sense to kill off our main characters. And honestly, yeah, I'd be perfectly happy if they'd lived. But it wasn't exactly that sad of an ending. In fact, it was all about love in the end. But are you so enamored that you will overlook your love of life? And you do love it. I've seen you smell the sea, gaze at the stars at night. Are you willing to sacrifice one mistress for another? Look into your heart and tell me that you're willing to make the choice. 
Lacroix is saying that love as a downfall is a mistress. When Nick is willing to drain Natalie, it's for love, but his love costs Natalie. Or maybe he should have loved her enough to let her go. He has to be willing to make the choice, an unselfish choice. He has to have faith in his love for Natalie. But then again, maybe they lived. Nothing is clear by the end. And either way, Natalie's faith was in the right place. No matter what happened, they were together. Either she joined him in the darkness, or he joined her in the light. It's eternity. It's up to you to decide what eternity that was. And maybe that was the best ending possible. In the end, it was all about faith, like the show has been about since the beginning. Nick finally does have faith. And I don't think that's such a bad ending after all. Forever Night is a great show with some bumpy moments. And while season three can get pretty rough, at its worst it's laughable, and I can deal with that. But for the most part, the program was a smart exploration of many different themes and vampiric elements, with a moody atmosphere and a solid cast. I'd definitely give it a recommend, especially if you enjoyed other genre shows around the early 90s. Maybe you'll like this, Forever Night. Smile. You better smile